Um, this is um, where I'm hoping we're going to help you out with the 25 markers on the on the A2 paper, if you're still a bit unsure about this, um, or if you're just looking at it um, later on, uh, you know, in terms of as a new resource. Um, the AQA website is it's quite tricky to get this. I'm going to show you how we get to this so you can look at other materials at a later stage. What we're trying to get is examples of student responses and we're trying to work out where, how do you get into that level four or even the level five. So what you want to do is go down here to the teacher resource bank. So we click on that and then you've got to scroll down again. And here it is, candidate exemplar example work, right? So we click on that. Okay, so they haven't, for A2 economics, they haven't got uh, an Econ 3 here, but the Ray Powell student unit guides uh, do, do have those sort of scripts um, for Econ 3 and, and Econ 4. Um, so let's look at this paper here. Right, um, so we're going to be looking for a good um, 25 marker. Okay, so we've got the data response, the context questions as they call them, sticking to the context, what the question's about, and using that data. Um, the handwriting maybe is not the easiest to follow on that one there. Okay, and they don't do too well. Um, I want to show you a good one. And, and even then, it may not be necessarily great, right? Um, Okay, so there's 25 out of 25, so that's a really nice one there. So yeah, we're definitely going to be using this. So do this yourself. If you keep scrolling down, you'll, you'll see some other kind of questions where you might want to challenge yourself by saying, right, they haven't scored that well. Can I spot why? Or they have done very well. And again, you know, why is that the case? Right, now I like this because this is going to be making use of data, which is, is the more challenging part of the exam, especially on, on Econ 4. It does build uh, skills here on, on Econ 2. So uh, worth you having a look at that one as well, uh, if you get the time. Okay, so here we go. Uh, extract B states per capita GDP levels in the UK and Western Europe have fallen increasingly behind those of the United States since 1995. Well, uh, that's quite a long time ago. Um, you might get something along the lines of today that, you know, growth in Britain and Europe has fallen increasingly behind the BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China. And in fact, actually, um, here at the start, you know, where are we now coming up towards um, April 2012, there were signs that the USA economy was growing faster than certainly the UK. So again, they might, they might bring that in. Um, it says here though, this is the key bit, so you can bring in your up-to-date knowledge, do, do do that, because it says here, using the data, that's not just extract B, and your own economic knowledge, yeah, you'll get credit for that. Assess the policies, so we're thinking about maybe monetary policy, fiscal policy, supply side policies, so that's where we'll start, we'll define what we mean by policies, could be adopted, to improve the underlying rate of economic growth. What do we mean by that? We mean trend growth. We mean most probably that long-run aggregate supply curve shifting out, that PPF shifting out. Maybe a simple diagram. Yeah. It, remember, you're writing not necessarily for an examiner or a teacher. You've got to imagine you're writing for uh, a new A2 economic student, trying to help them understand what this is about. Okay. So using, you know, we, we want to assess policies. Uh, we might pick up on a fiscal policy and a monetary policy. We might look at demand side policies like fiscal and monetary and then a supply side separate. We most probably want to keep one of these policies aside to add something new to bring more weight to our argument at the end. Okay, how can we use the data to answer this question? So all those earlier responses you've done, like comparing this data may be of use in helping you to answer the part D. That's why they are there. They're not just there as a tick box, get some marks. It's to, to help you build towards answering the question. Right, we can see, is there a real significant difference between the USA's growth rate and the UK's? Um, well, it does seem to suggest that the US is, an, is a roaring and pulling away. You know, that growth does seem to slow down towards the end of that period. Um, 
uh, and in the UK's growth, well, it's actually positive throughout this period as well. Um, okay. Oh, and in fact, look, 2002, UK's growth rate is higher. Yeah. What about unemployment? So the USA has had all this growth, and yet their unemployment was initially higher than the UK. So that's quite interesting. It shows the time lag between growth and the change in unemployment. Uh, UK's growth, well, it falters a bit, but it picks up a bit, doesn't it? You know, um, unemployment tends to stay around the same level. Okay. What about extract B? Um, again, we're thinking about going back to the question. We're thinking here, and this is where you choose which you know data question you're going to do. Um, policies to improve underlying rate of growth. Ah, so can we get some lessons learned from the data? So Japan, Asia, China's growing rapidly. Look at the growth rates there. Yeah, maybe the lessons are to be learned from these countries. Um, although it does say they're getting inflationary problems. So that's interesting, isn't it? Because your question is actually saying about focusing on underlying rate of growth. So we've got to be careful, maybe to talk about maybe two supply side policies. Uh, a monetary policy, that's most probably not unless it's you know low level inflation for a long period of time, allowing interest rates for a long period of time, but then you have to ask yourself why is inflation be low for a long period of time? It's most probably supply side policy, isn't it? So it might be this is where our evaluation comes in at the end, that you know you might get the trend growth but what's happening in terms of actual growth and monetary policy if it's been tightened? Yeah, that's going to be useful to use that. Um, Germany, fueled by increased exports, strong investments. So what policies might you do to, to, to enable that? In Britain, we might go for a weaker pound. Uh, what supply side policies might help exports investment? Um, Accelerator effect, is that suggested there? Um, oh, we've got oil price shock, a benign oil price shock possibly, um, where we might get some attempts to boost trend growth for supply side policy, but what, what if that gets damaged by some sort of supply side shock? Okay. Um, and then if, again, if you're looking at here, oil energy prices, and at the bottom it's saying, too early to judge whether the present expansion reflects an improvement in underlying economic growth. So it's kind of saying, again, about trend growth, potential output, it is that kind of average over a, over a period of time. Um, you know, before the recession, we thought the UK was growing about 2.5% on average. That was the kind of trend underlying growth of the UK economy. That got moved down to 2%. What is it now? given how stagnant the UK is. And it's, they're giving you a really good pointer here. It's actually quite difficult to sometimes tell the difference between you know, what's going on with actual growth and trend growth. So a nice evaluative bit there. Ah, growth and productivity. Okay, a major factor, slow take-up of new technology. So is this, is this something government does, or is this about supply-side reforms that businesses are doing? Is this something in the nature of businesses being more prepared to take risks in the United States, or having more of a profit incentive? Um, further reforms are needed, yeah? Uh, an aging population. So supply-side policy, lift the age of retirement. Um, we've got tax systems. Yes, yeah, so you've got loads there to actually give you quite a clear steer that we should be looking at a debate on supply side policies here. Right, so let's have a quick glance at this weaker student. I'm not gonna go through all of it, we'll just pick up at the start with how they started. Okay, um, where do they begin? Here, right? Um, so it's a bit unclear if that is definitely their start, so it'd be nice to get a clear introduction. Okay, so they've identified underlying growth, so we've got a D there. I haven't really told us much about that. All right, they, they've shown us, that they know it's about supply-side policies. Um, oh, replacement ratio is a nice business term, bit of knowledge, K. They explained what it is. Um, I think if you look at that, is there's some understanding. It's, you know, look at that, it's just one sentence paragraph. It doesn't really explain what the policy is to do this and what exactly the replacement ratio is about. Uh, oh, and then they jump on something else. Um, provide op people in the north with job opportunities. Well, how are you going to do that? Um, yeah, it just lacks depth, doesn't it? 
and it's a bit assertive, yeah? They could, all oh right, okay, they could do this by decreasing the house prices in the south. Well, what's your supply side policy to do that? Building on green belt land, um, build types of houses for people. It's just all very vague, really, okay? It, it lacks depth and analysis or any kind of evaluation going on there. So let's see what they said about that one. 10 out of 25. Uh, okay, it's uh, poor with some understanding. Uh, some appreciation of that, you know, LRS shifting out perhaps. Uh, yeah, we said there was some understanding of replacement ratio, but they really just don't explain it. So it's very limited understanding. Um, and again, you know, uh, it's not made clear their response. Policy of building is reasonable. Well, yeah, but they, they didn't really get into say, how would you do this? Would it be easy? Would it be straightforward? Would it be planning objections? You know, you could bring Econ 3 in here and talk about negative externalities. Um, more, you know, damage in terms of Professor Nicholas Stern's um, issue about climatic change affecting Britain with more storms and flooding and droughts and how that could damage potential growth. That maybe would have been our nice thing to brought in as a conclusion here. So a weak response. Okay. What is a better response here? Let's have a look. So this is supposed, supposed to be our 25 out of 25. Right, we won't go through all of it. We're just going to get a feel for uh, what they're doing there. Yep, so just to confirm. Yeah, nice big comment at the end. So read more of this in your own time. And let's just see if we're in agreement with this. Okay. Um, so the underlying rate of growth, uh, productive potential. That sounds better as a start. This will be primarily, so there's a suggestion there that may be other causes so by supply side performance. That's maybe giving us a hint that maybe the demand side, like we said, low interest rates might have an impact. Um, maybe getting into a bit of fiscal policy. These policies arrive by making markets work better. Really nice definition there. And removing their imperfections. Um, Gain in productivity, some more efficient use. Ah, so they're really kind of linking, you know, can explain to us in depth what, what, what this, this is in terms of underlying growth. And we've got the diagram, and we've even nailed it. We've kind of shown, look at that, really just made it nice and clear to us. By creating a more business-friendly environment, a uh, number of firms tractors to UK may rise. They may not, yeah? Maybe they'll just make more profit and send that profit back home. Um, maybe they're already based in Britain uh, and now such policies could it be increasing subsidies now you've got to be careful with subsidies yeah this has got to be macro this has got to be nationwide we've got to be convinced yeah uh, offering grants to set up in the UK is a little bit more specific so you know maybe benefit of the doubt there um, and they're really kind of explaining this in depth it'd be nice to maybe get a bit of evaluation kicking in here yeah yeah, it'll make firms more profitable, encourage them to set up in the UK. Well, we've said that, you know, maybe they've already set up in the UK. Maybe they're just giving those profits out as bonuses. Ah, hold on. However, uh, subsidising production is expensive. Yeah, especially if you're doing it macro, nationally. That's why often we might say subsidies as a supply-side policy to have national impact might not be that successful. It might be good and if they're specifically targeted at certain industries. Um, oh yes, uh, it's, it's possible that the firms could take the money, especially if they had a domestic monopoly, might not be interested in lowering prices, might not benefit consumers, might not contribute to underlying growth. So you can just see how they get into a lot more depth with it, yeah? Uh, on the other hand, firms retain more profit, could actually of course that profit, yeah, you get your bonus, but then people, shareholders invest back in and that might, yeah, boost investment, yeah? And look at it, this is all a really big exploration of this, yeah? How are you going to attract those businesses? Cutting red tape? Okay, we get it. This is, this is good stuff. Okay, just finish off by thinking about conclusions, okay? Right, um, wow, so we've got potentially quite a big chunk here. Um, Okay, so lowering interest rates. However, 66% of investments financed by retained profit. They know their stuff there. Um, ah, here it is. Overall, there are many policies that could be adopted to improve underlying growth. Yeah, this is the classic supply side problem. All sounds good in theory, 
But which one do you choose? Is it going to be effective? You know, you think about the we steps you can use here. Uh, governments might prefer to be more interventionist. Yeah, and we get changes in governments, don't we? Uh, and, and if it's going to have a long-lasting impact, maybe it needs the same kind of governmental direction. Um, or act less directly. Okay, many policies would need um, tax money. Okay, I think that's something new they brought in there. Um, so other initiatives and projects could lose out from this. An opportunity cost, such an easy thing to bring in. Yeah, what's the opportunity cost? Uh, how efficient is our use of resources here? Um, although supply side performance is the overriding factor in leading to underlying growth, satisfactory demand side performance. There it was. They gave that clue right at the start and they've come back to it and there are plenty of clues in the data that this is what you know a good student would pick up on. Would also be necessary for firms to want to invest um, if policies were intended for this to be worthwhile. Yeah, uh, maybe if we had a bit more time, we could just add to that and say, okay, you get a, an increase of potential output, but if there's a lack of actual growth, the big negative output gaps, you know, might mean firms are setting up, um, but but actually, uh, they just don't have the customers coming through the door to be able to hire staff. Firms or workers are moving into the market and they're not going to be hired. And after a while, you know, they'll leave the market and no longer be actively seeking work and that will collapse our trend growth. So if you have the time, yeah, we could nail down a bit more, but certainly a very impressive response. And just see what the examiner's got to say, right? So we try to make the point, the explain, exemplify, use the case study and get into evaluation as well. Um, can they answer this part of the question, assessed at level five? Yeah, good analysis evaluation. Well, they've got lots of policies. You don't need that. Um, it does say here, more than, more, more than the minimum of three that are required, yeah? Um, if level four above is to be rewarded. In fact, they, they, you don't need to get too hung up about these policies, yeah? Um, so, so you might look at, you know, uh, if you're thinking about it, interventionist supply side policies could be different ways. Um, yeah, I did wonder this. More frequent references to the data would have improved the answer. In fact, there is a risk that if there's no reference to the data, this fantastic response could drop down to something like, I don't know, 13 or maybe 16 out of 25 marks. That's probably 16. It is clear, it's logical, it's easy to follow. Conclusion, yeah, just not repetition. They brought something new to the table. Yeah, descriptions, explanations, specialist vocabulary, good understanding of economics throughout. Lots of evaluation, pros and cons of individual policies. Um, could be to take issue with some of the points raised. Yeah, I think we did say that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're picking up, you know, you're under a lot of pressure here. Look at that. They say 35 minutes there. So we usually say a mark per minute. But it really is. The more thinking time you've been given for this exam paper needs to be poured into that last part of the data. So that's it. Um, just glancing through. Do you see evidence of them using the data here? There's 66% of investment. Did that come from the article? Or is that their own knowledge? As stated in line 31, yeah, so we have got, that's most of what rescues, you, rescues it for them. Um, there's a lot of inferred use of the data. If you remember what I said about that conclusion, you know, they, they, it would be nice maybe to link back to the data in that conclusion as well. Okay, so that's just one look at um, a data question and 25 marks. would urge you to, to make greater use of this resource. You know, it really is good, as are the student unit guys uh, that Ray Powell's got that, that do something like this as well um, and, uh, and are available on Amazon. Okay, good luck.